Do you ever wonder if black holes can be created from pure light, squeeze enough stuff into one spot, and space-time itself will pucker up in a cosmic phenomenon known as a black hole? But what if that stuff wasn't matter, but light? According to Einstein's theory of relativity, energy and mass are equivalent, described by the famous equation E equals sign mc2. This means that, in theory, the energy of light could create a black hole if concentrated enough. Before you start imagining lasers punching holes through the universe, there's a catch. Researchers from the Complutense University of Madrid and the University of Waterloo suggest that something called the Schwinger effect might make this impossible. Einstein's general theory of relativity explains how space and time distort in the presence of energy. Put enough mass in one spot, and the distortion becomes so extreme that nothing, not even light, can escape. In the 1950s, physicist John Wheeler proposed that a concentration of gravitational or electromagnetic waves could warp space-time enough to trap these waves, creating an exotic object called a geon. While geons are mostly theoretical and highly unstable, one intriguing form called a Kugelblitz pops up in science fiction. German for ball lightning, a Kugelblitz is a black hole formed from intense beams of light. General relativity says this is possible, but quantum physics disagrees. Theoretical physicist Alvaro Alvarez Dominguez and his team ran the numbers on how electromagnetic fields behave at extreme energy levels. In the quantum world, waves of possibility ripple like a casino's roulette wheels. Small bets rarely win, but pile enough energy on one spot and you're guaranteed a result. This phenomenon, known as the Schwinger effect, suggests that strong electromagnetic fields can produce pairs of electrons and positrons from the quantum vacuum. In a yet-to-be peer-reviewed paper, Alvarez Dominguez's team showed that this effect would prevent the formation of Kugelblitzer. Any attempt to concentrate light enough to create a black hole would result in charged particles popping into existence and zooming away, stopping a black hole from forming. Their conclusion? Forming black holes solely from light is impossible, whether in a lab or in space. But they admit things might have been different in the early universe's extreme conditions. Other forms of geons, like those based on gravitational waves, remain curiosities from the cosmos's infancy. But can we recreate these cosmic giants in our laboratories? Let's explore the fascinating journey of scientists as they venture into the heart of black holes. The Hawking Radiation Conundrum In 1974, the brilliant physicist Stephen Hawking proposed a mind-bending idea. Black holes aren't entirely black. Instead, they emit a faint radiation known as Hawking radiation. Here's the scoop. Black holes have an invisible boundary called the event horizon. Beyond this point, nothing escapes, not even light. Quantum fluctuations near the event horizon lead to the creation of particle-antiparticle pairs. Normally, they annihilate each other instantly, Hawking's revelation. Hawking realized that if one particle of the pair crosses the event horizon while the other escapes, it would appear as radiation. This process gradually robs the black hole of energy, causing it to evaporate over eons. The lab-simulated black hole scientists have ingeniously created analogues of black holes in the lab. Using a chain of atoms, they mimic the event horizon's effects on quantum particles. These simulated black holes exhibit properties akin to Hawking radiation, the quantum dance of atoms. One is dimensional chains imagine a line of atoms each connected to its neighbors. Electrons can hop from one position to another along this chain, creating an event horizon. By adjusting the hopping ease, physicists create a fake event horizon. Beyond this boundary, certain properties vanish, mimicking the real event horizon, temperature rise. The effect of this simulated event horizon leads to a rise in temperature. It's like an equivalent black hole system. Particles straddling the event horizon become entangled. This entanglement seems instrumental in generating Hawking radiation. The glow of discovery, visible Hawking radiation. It confirms the interplay between gravity, described by general relativity, and quantum mechanics toward a unified theory. But what exactly is this fascinating quantum phenomenon? Imagine the vacuum of empty space, seemingly devoid of anything. Yet, in the quantum world, this void isn't as empty as it appears. Here's the lowdown quantum fluctuations. In the vacuum, particles and antiparticles, such as electrons and positrons, can spontaneously pop into existence and annihilate each other. 
This occurs due to the inherent uncertainty of quantum physics, where energy and momentum can briefly fluctuate even in regions devoid of matter. When an intense electric field is applied, it can extract energy from these vacuum fluctuations. If the field is strong enough, it can pull virtual particle-antiparticle pairs apart, turning them into real particles. These newly created particles then exist independently. Threshold field strength. The Schwinger effect has a critical threshold. The electric field must be strong enough to overcome the mass-energy equivalence described by E equal sign MC2 of the virtual particles. If the field surpasses this threshold, particle-antiparticle pairs can materialize. Experimental verification. While the Schwinger effect has not been directly observed in everyday laboratory settings due to the immense field strength required, it plays a crucial role in our understanding of quantum electrodynamics, or QED, and the behavior of the vacuum. Cosmic implications. In extreme environments, such as near black holes or during the early moments of the universe, electric fields can reach the necessary strength for the Schwinger effect to occur. This phenomenon contributes to the richness of the cosmic tapestry. But that's not all. Empty space isn't as empty as it seems. Let's explore a couple of other intriguing quantum phenomena. Vacuum fluctuations, also known as quantum foam. In the vacuum of space, particles and antiparticles spontaneously pop in and out of existence. This bubbling activity is known as vacuum fluctuations. These extremely short-lived virtual particles remain unnoticed in most cases, but their existence affects the fabric of space itself. Imagine a frothy quantum foam underlying the seemingly empty void, a dynamic dance of fleeting particles and energy. Vacuum biofringence, neutron stars, remnants of massive stellar explosions possess incredibly strong magnetic fields, nearly 100 trillion times stronger than Earth's. According to quantum electrodynamics, space isn't truly empty. It's teeming with virtual particles. In the vicinity of a neutron star's intense magnetic field, these virtual particles become excited and influence passing photons. This effect, known as vacuum biofringence, behaves like a prism for light, altering its propagation. The Schwinger effect and these other quantum phenomena reveal the astonishing complexity and beauty of the universe at its most fundamental levels. Who knows what other secrets the quantum world holds? As we journey from the quantum world to the extremes of our own planet, we encounter some of the most astonishing forms of life known to science, extremophiles. These remarkable organisms have evolved to thrive in environments once considered entirely uninhabitable. Let's dive into the world of extremophiles and uncover their secrets. High temperature, uh, thermophiles, these heat-loving organisms flourish in scorching environments like hydrothermal vents on the ocean floor. Imagine thriving in temperatures exceeding 100 degrees Celsius, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Thermophiles have adapted to such extremes, challenging our understanding of life's limits. Acidity, acidophiles. Acidophiles thrive in highly acidic places, such as acidic hot springs. Their resilience to such hostile conditions opens new frontiers in our understanding of survival. Pressure, barophiles or piezophiles, picture the crushing depths of the ocean where the pressure is immense. Barophiles inhabit these extreme depths, including the Mariana Trench, Earth's deepest point. Their adaptations allow them to endure conditions that would crush most other forms of life. Cold, psychrophiles. In the icy realms of Antarctica's lakes and deep-sea rocks, psychrophiles endure freezing temperatures. Their ability to survive and even thrive in such cold environments is nothing short of extraordinary. Salinity halophiles. Halophiles live in extremely salty environments like salt flats and hypersaline lakes. Where most life would perish, these salt-loving organisms have found a way to flourish. pH extremes, alkaliphiles and acidophiles. Alkaliphiles love alkaline conditions, while acidophiles prefer acidic ones. Their ability to withstand extreme pH levels showcases the incredible adaptability of life. Now let's explore some of the survival mechanisms that enable extremophiles to conquer these harsh environments. Extremolites and metabolites. Extremophiles produce specific molecules called extremolites such as compatible solutes to maintain cellular balance. These compounds help regulate osmotic pressure, stabilize proteins, and protect against extreme conditions. Heat shock proteins, HSPs. When exposed to high temperatures, extremophiles synthesize HSPs. These proteins prevent denaturation and assist in refolding damaged proteins, ensuring cellular function in extreme heat. 
Cold adapted enzymes, psychrophiles. Psychrophiles produce enzymes that function optimally at low temperatures, crucial for metabolic processes in cold environments. Bearer protection mechanisms, barophiles. Barophiles adapt to high pressure conditions by modifying membrane lipids and proteins to withstand pressure changes. pH tolerance, acidophiles and alkaliphiles. Acidophiles and alkaliphiles adjust their cellular machinery to endure extreme pH levels, maintaining function in acidic or alkaline conditions. Radiation resistance. Some extremophiles endure high radiation levels by repairing DNA damage, preventing mutations caused by ionizing radiation desiccation resistance. Xerophiles. Xerophiles survive in extremely dry conditions by protecting their cellular structures and maintaining water balance.